All right there, everyone. The Yellow Vest Uprising is spreading across the world, even making its way to Taiwan. That's what we'll be talking about. On today's video, we are officially entering into week six of the Yellow Vest protests. And as far as the corporate as globalist media is concerned, well, they were all done, right? They've dissipated. They've begun to uh, disappear. The, the outrage is beginning to subside. The collective meltdown and temper tantrum is finally over. We can go back to our happy clappy globalist project world and all. That's what the globalist media wants you to think. Remember, as uh, even media scholars and anthropologists recognize, the media invents a world and then reports that invention as news. A corporatist globalist media invents, it fabricates a secular globalized world and then reports that invention as objective journalism. But what's really going on is actually quite different. The Yellow Vest uprising that began in Paris and swept through the nation to include upwards of a quarter of a million people within France just really captures the heart of the dissatisfaction outrage that quite literally tens if not hundreds of millions of people have with globalization. Globalization remakes the world according to what scholars call a global division of labor. And that's where manufacturing and industrial factory jobs are all shipped out to third world nations, while capital and finance are relocated around urban centers, creating a double process of deindustrialization and gentrification. So deindustrialization is caused by shipping manufacturing jobs to third world nations, and the gentrification involves a massive increase in the cost of living in urban areas. And this double process of deindustrialization and gentrification has left rural populations completely disenfranchised from the globalist economy. So on the one hand, they have no factories to work at anymore in their rural areas where they live, since all the factories have been shipped overseas. And so the only jobs now are in urban areas where all the capital and finance has been relocated. But because capital and finance have centered in urban areas, it's attracting very high paying white collar professionals who've in turn gentrified the cities, which involves raising the cost of living beyond anything that rural folk can afford. And so, we talked about this in a, other videos, one scholar in particular has pointed to the growth of what he calls peripheral France, which is made up of people who can't live in urban centers, but who can't find jobs in their rural areas. So more and more, they feel like they've been completely shut out from the national conversation and decision making. And of course, to make matters even worse, Macron decides that he wants to slap a massive fuel tax on these people as they commute from their rural homes into the cities for work. So of course, there was going to be a massive uprising. So in many respects, the Yellow Vest uprising captures the heart of why so many people in France in particular are rightly disaffected and outraged over the world being remade in a globalist image. But what we're finding, of course, is it's not merely France. Actually, it's far from it. The Yellow Vest uprising appears to be as global as globalism itself. The first protests that we saw outside of France started to appear in Belgium and Netherlands. Now, again, what took the political and media elite by surprise was that neither Belgium nor the Netherlands had instituted a fuel tax or anything like that, which we're told was the sole cause of the massive uprisings in France. But as we've noted on several videos, the fuel tax was simply the straw that broke the camel's back. The uprising isn't about taxes per se. It's not even about government policies per se. The uprising is about a world political order that has demonstrably shut out tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people from a sense of place and participation within such a globalist world. Again, the studies in recent years are absolutely conclusive on this. Scholars are calling this sense of displacement experienced by so many as a kind of deprivation, which involves an extraordinary sense of fear and anxiety among populations, that they're losing out relative to others in society, that they simply have no part in a world of rising prosperity and upward social mobility. The world's economies are growing, and yet their wages are completely stagnant. Uh, employment in urban areas is flourishing, and yet their rural areas are becoming you know, digressing rust belts. Again, just take, for example, youth employment, right? Youth unemployment, I should say. The economic collapse of 2008 hit Europe hard, but particularly the young. 
Net unemployment in the Eurozone fell by 6 million between 2008 and 2013, and half of those affected were under the age of 25. The Economist magazine points out that in southern and Mediterranean Europe, youth unemployment remains appallingly high, and those who do work get pretty subpar jobs that are low-wage, often part-time. And so it's no coincidence that millennials' confidence in the European Union for economic integration has imploded. For example, in Spain, only about 30% of youth support the EU. On Italy, it's down to only 12%. And we're seeing a, we're just seeing similar attitudes among the wider population demographics. For example, 64% of Brits, 77% of Germans all agreed with the statement, the poor get poor and the rich get richer in capitalist economies. We're finding huge percentages of populations that feel that they have no future in this brave new globalist world we're embarking on. And so this whole silly notion of, you know, wait a minute, why are these people protesting in Belgium and Netherlands? You know, we didn't raise their taxes. It just appears to be nothing short of, frankly, a willful ignorance of what's really happening. And this is because it's not just France, it's not just Belgium, it's not just the Netherlands. Yellow vest protests have spread to Portugal, to Canada, and yes, even Taiwan. CNN reported just the other day that a massive demonstration in Taipei involved protesters calling for reform of the entire Taiwanese tax system. Now, the demonstration was put on by an organization known as the Legal Reform League, which was formed back in 2016, and they've demonstrated before, but this is the first time they, they donned the yellow vests in solidarity with populist uprisings going on all over the world. Similar sentiments were echoed uh, recently in Portugal. A spokesman for their yellow vest protest said, look, this movement is not aligned with any political party. It's not aligned with any political platform. We simply want to tell the government, we're tired of your corruption. We're tired of your excessive taxation. And here's the duty, doozy. We're tired of paying to sustain the political class. Again, this is not a matter of a policy reform here or there, tinkering with this or that within the system. This really is a rebellion against an entire political an economic order. And so in light of all this, I'll end here with a montage of yellow vest movements going on all over the world. I just put this video up in its own right if you want sort of the shorter uh, edition without the commentary, but I thought this would be a fitting, shall we say, video monument of sorts that I hope will inspire all of us to stand with these protesters and demonstrators against this new globalist world order and to stand up for a new rising conservative age based on nationalism, populism, and traditionalism. So enjoy, and as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. It would be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of this channel. God bless. Very complicated, you know. There is a, a crisis. Normally, the government has to resign, but he, di he, doesn't, he did, didn't resign. And it's a nice example of the problem in Belgium. They, they, these people they speak about democracy, but they don't use democracy. Normally, in a really democracy, the first, first minister uh, Charles Michel has to resign. He didn't do it. That's the first thing. And second way, it's a total capitalist political for the for the people with a lot of money, but for the little people, for the poor people, they don't do anything. <laughs>